Yesterday we were working on multiplying and dividing rational expressions, so today we're going to work on adding and subtracting them. Um, just like before, we have to think about our rules for fractions. So in order to add or subtract fractions, we need common denominators. That is still true of these rational expressions. So we're going to start with that. Um, so we're going to take a look at number one. We need to think about what our common denominator is going to be. Um, so first we'll think about the number 2 and the number 8. A uh, common denominator between them is going to be 8. So we would like to have 8 on the bottom of both of these. Well, the second fraction already has an 8. The first one doesn't. In order to get an 8, we have to multiply by 4, top and bottom. Okay. Now we'll move on to the x's. This first fraction has an x cubed. Uh, the second fraction only has an x. So we need to go with the bigger one. We need x cubed. That's what we would like on both of these, uh, which means this fraction needs two more x's. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by x squared. And then we'll take a look at y's. The second fraction has a y squared, so we're going to need a y squared in our denominator. Um, the first fraction doesn't have any y's, so we'll have to multiply by y squared, top and bottom. So this is the way I like to think about it. I just go through piece by piece. First I look at the numbers, then I look at the x's, and then the y's, or whatever letters there are. So now my first fraction, the numerator, if I multiply, I get 12y cubed. And the second fraction is 5zx squared. Now I have a common denominator, so I can just leave that. 8x cubed, y squared. And in the numerator, those are not like terms, so I can't like combine them or anything. I'll just write them exactly how they are. 12y cubed plus 5zx squared. And that's it. Uh, there's nothing to reduce um, because those weren't like terms or anything. So we're done with that one. Let's take a look at number two. Same idea. Um, we want to get a common denominator. So first I'm going to look at the numbers, 16 and 5. Um, I don't know anything in common with those. Uh, if you don't know with numbers, you can just multiply them by each other. So 16 times 5 is 80. And I have 80 on the bottom of both of these. So 16 times 5 will give me 80. So I need to multiply top and bottom by 5. And then on the other one, 5 times 16. We're going to get an announcement in here. Please call 1400. Thank you. OK. I don't know if that's going to show up, but whatever. Um, now let's think about the a's. Um, the second fraction has an a cubed, so that's going to need to be included. This first fraction does not have an a cubed, so we're going to have to multiply top and bottom. Then we'll take a look at the b's. The first fraction has a b squared, the second fraction only has a b, so we need to take the higher one. They're both going to need a b squared, which means the second fraction needs an additional b. Okay. So when we do this, this will give us a common denominator. So now in the numerator, on the first one, I have 15a to the fifth. And on the second one, 8 times 16, uh, how about 128 xb. Okay, I now have common denominators, so I can just leave that, 80a cubed b squared. And the numerators, these are not like terms, so you're just going to have to write them separate. 15a to the fifth minus 125, I'm sorry, 128xb. Okay. Um, in the next video, we will talk about when you have um, things that need factors.